presentation of Fox Sports. We are Blackboard. We are Christmas. It's the I-94 Series 2014 edition from Miller Park in Milwaukee. Three-game weekend series between the Milwaukee Brewers and the Chicago Cubs. Pitching matchup tonight featuring pitchers facing their former teams. Matt Garza on the mound for the Brewers looking for his first win of 2014. He'll be matched up with the former Brewer, Carlos Villanueva has struggled this season, but his overall numbers against the Brewers have been actually pretty decent. Good evening from Milwaukee alongside Bill Schroeder. I'm Matt LaPay. Sophia Minnert will be joining us as well. We'll rock the uh, recent history in this series. It's been awfully good from the Brewers' perspective. New year. We'll see if that trend continues. Yeah, they need to continue to do that, but the last three years, the Brewers have been able to take apart the Chicago Cubs. You see the graphic right there. Last three years, 36 and 16. It's even better in the last 27 games. 22 and 5. One of the big reasons the Cubs bullpen over the last three years has not been very good. And a lot of the offensive damage the Brewers have been able to do. Ryan Braun in particular on that bullpen. And that's going to be the case here in this series. Their bullpen not very good. Ryan Braun outstanding numbers. Career against the Cubs. 17 home runs. 94 games. On the flip side, the Brewers bullpen, as good as they have been, they're going to have to deal with a guy that had a tough year last year, really couldn't get it going, but off to a good start this year. 19 RBI, Starling Castro, and he's very good defensively out there as well. Looking forward to this weekend series, the Brewers and the Cubs. Coming up, Craig Deshaun and Jerry Augustine take a closer look at Matt Garza as he goes up against his former team, the Chicago Cubs. On Fox Sports Wisconsin. Baseball in Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. 
by Miller Lite. Now in the original can, it's Miller time. By Toyota, let's go places. And by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. The Bob Euchre statue outside Miller Park. Cubs and Brewers ready to roll. There's a new statue inside. We'll show you later. Tonight's pitchers, Carlos Villanueva and Matt Garza. Villanueva, of course, the former Brewer. Matt Garza, the former Chicago Cub, looking for his first win as a Milwaukee Brewer. And he's hoping it'll come tonight against his old team. Garza's had some up and down performances, some defense behind him that has been spotty at times as well. What's he got to do to break it all down to get win number one as a Brewer? Well, I think, first of all, he has to be himself. And when you look at the style that Bat Garza is, he is a power pitcher. And it all starts with his aggressiveness with his fastball. It is extremely important that he's able to locate that fastball to good, and can have good command. Using the breaking ball effectively is a big part of his game. When he can command the fastball, effectively use that breaking ball, stay focused, he's going to give you a good outing. All right, Matt Garza gave up five earned runs in his last start, looking for a bounce back effort here. And just moments ago, Bob Euchre throwing out the ceremonial first pitch. Big day for him today, throwing to his son, Bob Jr. Great to see that happening. And we've got baseball on the way. First pitch, lineups all coming up. Enjoy it. Game one of the series. The Cubs Brewers, the rivalry is underway. I went to uh, to see the uh, the architect of the whole thing and uh, when we put it together finally put it together to jump into this molten metal it really hurt and they told me it was going to hurt uh, and they told me to hold my breath and they had stuff in my ears and everything where I wouldn't get plugged up but uh, jumping into that hot metal was that was kind of tough I'll be honest with you. <laughs> series the I-94 rivalry gets going the Brewers with baseball's best record we'll keep going with it because it's a fact 16 and 6 earlier today Bob Euchre's front row statue was unveiled ceremony here at the ballpark Bill Schroeder the MC and uh, Mr. Euchre leads baseball in statues and justifiably so and had some interesting comments about the process of the statue being put together the first day I went to uh, to see the uh, the architect of the whole thing and uh, when we put it together finally put it together to jump into this molten metal it really hurt and they told me it was going to hurt uh, and they told me to hold my breath and they had stuff in my ears and everything where I wouldn't get plugged up but uh, jumping into that hot metal was <laughs> that was kind of tough I'll be honest with you <laughs> classic comments wow. from the Hall of Famer <laughs> yeah, he's something else, isn't he? That's a great statue out there. Folks going up there, getting their pictures 
taken with Uke up there at the uh, the apex of the roof. It's a way up there, Matty. <laughs> I, I, we were up there today. That's a way up there. Yeah. If uh, it's a great view. I mean, if you're good with heights, it's all. It's a great. It's a great seat. And it was a fun ceremony and seeing some Hall of Famers in town. It was a good time. Let's take a look at Rick Renteria and the Chicago Cubs. First year at the helm for Renteria after several years on the bench with the San Diego Padres. Here's how they'll line up tonight. Emilio Bonifacio, Luis Valbuena, and Anthony Rizzo at the top of the order. Starlin Castro hitting cleanup, and that is a very rare thing for him, followed by Nate Sherholtz and Junior Lake, Ryan Sweeney, Wellington Castillo, and Carlos Villanueva, 7, 8, and 9 in the order, facing... The former Cub, Matt Garza. And yeah, Matt Garza looking for his first win of the season. Last time out at Pittsburgh, five innings. He have six runs, five of them earned. He didn't get a lot of help from his defense. Spent two and a half years with the Chicago Cubs and now with the Brewers and facing the Cubs as we check out the Brewers defense. Brought to you by Menards. Chris Davis, Carlos Gomez, Ryan Braun from left to right. Ramirez Segura, Jeanette Overbay. From third to first, Jonathan Lucroy behind home plate. And the Brewers right now holding the second best team earned run average in all of baseball at 2.52. Take a look at the home plate umpire, and he is the crew chief, Gary Cedarstrom, here tonight. Crew chief, obviously, throughout this weekend as these teams hook up for the first time in 2014. We mentioned the Brewers at 16 and 6, the best record. In baseball and opening up the weekend with a four and a half game lead in the National League Central while the Cubs are clearly in rebuilding mode at seven and 14 a team that continues to build the farm system a very promising one at that uh, by all accounts and just trying to hold things together this year Rox you mentioned it's been a good series for the Brewers the last three years but Cubs had their way for a while yes they did before three years uh, they had the big uh, playoff runs for the Cubs and the Cubs came in here I think a few years ago and swept the Brewers in a four game series the year that the Cubs won the division and it doesn't matter what the, if you're rebuilding or not I mean you know Cubs coming in here they've lost two in a row after winning two straight and they are big leaguers and they can beat this you got to play good to beat them Brewers coming off taking two out of three in the series against San Diego Kyle Loesch with a his Bud Black put it pitching 101 performance a couple of nights ago and Emilio Bonifacio will lead things off for Chicago as we are ready to roll the Brewers and the Cubs. And we are underway at Miller Park. Bonifacio got off to a torrid start. First six games, he was 13 for 24. <laughs> yeah. Still swinging the bat pretty good, almost 360 for his batting average. And that's a good way to start a game when you have a guy on base just about every time on base percentage over 400 Cubs coming off a series split with the Arizona Diamondbacks Cubs took the first two and then the D-backs came back to win games three and four including on Wednesday when they celebrated the 100th anniversary of Wrigley Field they was going very well for the Cubs and then the ninth inning happened. Yeah, five run ninth inning for the Arizona Diamondbacks. We talked about the bullpen on our open tonight. They have had a rough time of it. One of the big major differences between these two teams. Brewers bullpen has been terrific. Cubs not so much. Well one two. Bonifacio takes inside. Renteria in his first year as we mentioned is the manager of the Cubs. They talk about the positive vibes that, that he sends along uh, throughout the clubhouse. He's trying to get things back in order, but the Brewers are going to try to keep them real in here this weekend. They need that positive energy in that dugout with a young club. A full count to the leadoff hitter, Emilio Bonifacio. Cubbies two and six on the road this season. Imagine they just finished up a home stand yesterday with the Diamondbacks. And it's strike three called on a Fascio caught looking. And that's how the game begins. It burned off the outside corner that time. Last time out against the Pirates in Pittsburgh, he started out pretty well. Location good. And started to work that curveball, and you can see Cedarstrand ringing that one up. Had the corner. 
good location on the 3-2 pitch. Yeah, Guards' last start was that, well, there was a lot of craziness in Pittsburgh, but the Brewers getting that come-from-behind win, courtesy of the Ryan Braun two-run ninth-inning homer. Luis Valbuena takes a strike. Just getting started. Brewers and Cubs first of three here in Milwaukee. Renteria like Bud Black. We saw Bud Black with the Padres trying a lot of different lineup, a lot of different combinations, trying to get some offense going. Cubs have scored 79 runs. There's only 12 fewer than the Brewers. We were looking at that today. That's uh, interesting. And difference has been the bullpen, the runs that they have allowed. Yeah, they have had a, a heck of a time, and it's still a work in progress trying to find a closer. They've, they just cannot find an answer. In that department at this early stage of the season, the starting pitching has been pretty good. Now, being away of a tonight starter has struggled, but they've had some pretty good starting pitching here in this first month of the season. Yeah, 362 starters earned run average, 422 for the the bullpen. Those don't hit a lot of home runs. They don't run much. Jeff Samarja, their ace, their best starting pitcher. Yeah, his record, if ever there's a deceiving one, he has it. 0 and 2, but an ERA of about one and a half. This has popped up. Ramirez, two men out. Going back to Smarja. He's gone seven plus innings in each of his five outings this season and has absolutely nothing to show for it. Right, yeah. Well, sometimes that's the way it goes and you know there's always that one guy in every starting rotation that doesn't get many runs and Samarja is that guy for the Cubs. Anthony Rizzo off to a good start this season last year hit just 233. A year ago did Homer 23 times and drove in 80. Last year being his first full season. Two up two down. They're in the top half of the first. 0 and 1. Rizzo homered yesterday in the game against the D backs. Got good pop, gap to gap power. His problem has been not being able to handle left handed pitching, but he's done a much better job of that in the early going here this year. A good slider from guards. It looks like he has good stuff in the first inning. Rizzo. Rizzo down two strikes and nothing. He's got a long term contract as Anthony Rizzo. Through 2019 club options two years after that. At 40 doubles in 2013. I can hit got some pop good defense. He and Starling Castro kind of the nuts and bolts of this franchise. This is popped up giving chases Davis and it will be a foul ball and unreachable. Davis and Ramirez giving chase. Nothing at two to Anthony Rizzo with two men out of the base is empty. We're just starting the game at Miller Park. Yeah, Garza just continues to pump in strikes. Hey, Luke are going out there. Hey, how about bouncing a breaking ball? See if we go for it. He's been throwing him nothing but strikes in this at bat. You know, Garza has a little bit of extra incentive in this game tonight. Two and a half years with the Cubs. 21 and 18, his record in those two and a half seasons. Strike three swing and Matt Garza off to a good start. He strikes out two out of three. And we are through one half inning. Brewers already with something to smile about. Scoreless at Miller Park.
inbound one two three in the top of the first and now the Brewers get their first at bat tonight. As we open up this weekend series in Milwaukee Ron Renicki's team four and a half games ahead of the pack in the NL Central and here is his batting order. His lineup brought to you by Associated Bank. Carlos Gomez, Scooter Jeanette, Ryan Braun, one, two, three. Ramirez, Lucroy, and Davis in the middle. Followed by Lyle Overbay, Gene Segura, and Matt Garza. And that group will face Carlos Villanueva. Yeah, Villanueva had two losses out of the bullpen before he made his first start this year. His first start was on April 6th, and that was a win. He got pounded against the Cardinals in St. Louis. Three innings, nine runs. That's why you see that earned run average at near 11. Carlos Gomez starts the home half of the first. Gomez had a fairly quiet series at the plate against San Diego. There was a lot of very good pitching in that series. It had more than a little bit to do with Carlos, just a couple of hits against San Diego. And Brewers have faced some pretty good starting pitching on this, you know, here at Miller Park this year. When you think about all the teams that have come in here. Hot shot through and a base hit for Gomez. The Brewers get their leadoff man aboard. And Carlos started his career with the Brewers, went to Toronto for a couple of seasons. His second year was Chicago. A 2 0 fastball, being away, but just can't live down the middle on a 2 0 count, and Gomez able to bang one into left field. Scooter Jeanette. And swing it a hot bat over his last nine games. Hitting 375 over that stretch. He was hit safely in each of his last four. Gomez has three steals and four attempts this year. And you have a left handed hitter in that number two spot making it a little bit more difficult for the catcher to get a view or a peek to see if he's going. Scooter's going to take some pitches to see if Gomez wants to steal. And Gomez is going. The pitch is taken and they throw is high and late. And Carlos Gomez has himself a stolen base. It'll be interesting to see, Rock, during the weekend how effective the Brewers are going to be running against the Cubs. 21, well, they're one for 21, throwing out base dealers so far this season. And Castillo now one for 16. So, yeah, it's been a problem for Chicago giving up those stolen bases, getting guys in scoring position. Brewers with a runner in scoring position right out of the gate. 1 0 coming to Jeanette. Being a waiver in the rotation, Jake Arietta. Shoulder issues, but is, is expected back here soon. Arietta, good stuff. We saw Arietta last year and with the Cubs. The starting rotation hasn't been too bad for Chicago. That's not been their issue as far as pitching goes. Strike to Jeanette. Yeah, Jose Varis began the season as the closer, but that uh, change was made there about two weeks ago, and they're they're still in search of one. Yeah, they've got an eight-man bullpen just to figure out how to get outs late in the game. That's a lot of guys in the pen. Yeah, both Renteria and Ron Renicky, different reasons, obviously, but playing with just four position players off the bench. The two-one coming to Scooter Jeanette. Two and two. Carlos about 90 miles an hour is all you're going to get out of him. He throw a change up. He likes his change up a lot. Curveball, slider. He'll cut it once in a while, but if you're looking for big velocity, forget it. Not with being a waiver, an off-speed specialist. Gomez, the runner at second, a two-two count to Scooter Jeanette. Full count. 
Let's check out the Menards Cup defense for tonight. There you see it. We got Lake Sweeney and Sheerholz in the outfield. Albuena Castro, Bonifacio, and Rizzo in the infield. And Wellington Castillo hanging the signs for Carlos being away with tonight. Jeanette fouls it off. It was interesting last year being away of a started who began the year as a starter with the Cubs and went to the bullpen when Matt Garza came off the DL. Garza of course traded from Chicago to Texas. Last July. A 3 2 count to Jeanette. So Brewers trying to get something going here in inning number one. To left field. That's Junior Leg, and he flat out missed it. Here comes Gomez around third. Jeanette the second. And the Brewers have a 1 0 lead. I'm not sure what happened right there. It looked like he was camped under. I'm not sure if the glass panels out there above the first base dugout had any effect on that, but he just whiffed it completely, and Gomez able to score. Jeanette into second base. This is about as routine as it gets in left field. And just missed it. Looked like he was there. Gomez is able to score easily. And Scooter able to get into second. Wow. Not a very good start to the night for Chicago. Right off the end of the glove. Got to believe that's an error. They've, for the moment, ruled it an RBI double. Wow. Okay. Scooter will take it. It didn't look like the the you know the sun had any bearing on the play. Not that there's any sun out there, but sometimes those glass panels you know can uh, create a problem early in games for that left fielder. But it didn't appear that that was the issue. Looked like he saw it the whole way. See those career numbers. Ryan Braun likes facing the Chicago Cubs. Ryan was two for three on Wednesday against San Diego. So the Brewers get an early run against Carlos Villanueva. Yeah, kind of trying to figure out if the sun or the glass panels had any bearing on it. Didn't look like it. He just flat missed it. Well, sometimes there's no expla explaining other than the guy just whipped on it. One and one to Braun. Villanueva facing the Brewers for the sixth time. It's his second start. Last start was here in Milwaukee, late July, and no decision. He actually pitched pretty well, and he has fared pretty well. Yep, one and oh, and a 277 earned run average against the Brew Crew. Those numbers dramatically different from the numbers that Villanueva has so far this season with an ERA on the edge of 11. One and two to Braun with Jeanette at second. Hot smash, base hit. Here comes Jeanette. He will score. Braun to second as the throw gets away from Castillo. But Villanueva backing up and he shoots one in the center, but Braun will have to hold. Wow. Well, this, well, this is about the time a manager comes out there and calls timeout. Isn't this a uh, you know a basketball timeout right here? Take it. I mean, take a 20 take second a timeout, maybe a reset button, but boy, things are not going well for the Cubs. <laughs> Not sure why Lake goes home here. That's the first mistake. Second mistake, a bad throw. Here's another mistake. This one by being a wave of air mailing the second baseman. And finally, order restored. Ryan Braun just stays put at second base. Boy, oh boy. And here comes Chris Bazio. Yeah, they're taking that 20 second timeout right now. The former Brewer, now the pitching coach. 
for the Chicago Cubs. Now the one thing Chris Bosio was hoping for from his starter here tonight was that you know a decent start. We you talked about how rough it's been his last two starts 14 earned runs in his last seven and two thirds innings from being away and things have not gone well so far. A gift double for Jeanette and an RBI a ball that should have been caught. Cub just throwing the ball all over the place when Bryant Braun was up. Chris Basio trying to settle down his starting pitcher and he's that starting pitcher is going to be facing the best in the big leagues with runners in scoring position. That's a stat line that Ramirez has been ahead of everybody for a while. And MLB best 12 for 20. Runners in scoring position and he has one now. Braun out at second. And he's been on the, the, the baseball pretty well even from the beginning of spring training. I mean his first at bat in spring. Hitting line drives and he's been singing the ball well since. A healthy and hot start for Ramirez who. In this game number 23 of the year is making his 22nd start. Came off the bench. In one game he did not start. Healthy in the lineup and has been very productive. And the Brewers need him in that lineup on a consistent basis if they want to continue to play well. Speaks for itself those numbers right there. Still nobody out in the bottom of the first. The one hit that Aramis had in the San Diego series was a solo homer. He's gone deep three times here in this not quite first month of the season. And he's had good success against being a wave of four for eight. That's it well to right, but Sheerholtz is there. And that's out number one. Boy, they are hitting it on the button. And that's that much inning. Yeah, tough break for Ramirez right at the right field of Sheerholtz. So being a wave of getting his pitches up in the strike zone. The Brewers seeing a well, getting good swings. Jonathan Lucroy. Had a good series against the Padres. Three for seven. And a very healthy batting average. Here in this early portion of the season with a Milwaukee catcher. Brewers with a couple of runs across in this first inning. One out and Braun at second. You know, the kind of hitter you expect to have good numbers in these spots. Not doesn't try and pull it. Shoots it up the middle. Opposite field. Doesn't strike out much. Bouncer to short. Castro. Two outs. So being away but trying to settle down. The Brewers knocked him around and his defense. Threw it around yeah. a lot. Yeah, that last pitch up in his zone, a slider that stayed up, but Luke tried to pull it. You don't see him do that very often. That's a pitch that you drive in the center field. Chris Davis had a solo blast on Wednesday night. Brewers were getting some home run pop from the bottom half of the order. Segura. Three run shot. Davis the solo blast. Against a guy who doesn't give up a lot of home runs. San Diego. Their starter Tyson Ross. The Brewers jumped on him early in that game. That just doesn't happen. 
And Ross off to a great start with the Brewers hit him up pretty good five runs. One and one to Chris Davis. First three Brewers reached. The first two scored. Gomez and Jeanette. There's Braun at second. He held up. Kerwin Danley, the first base umpire. Two balls, one strike to Chris Davis. Taking a little bit too much time, kind of trying to freeze him up there at the plate. Be an interesting matchup for Davis, who's a good fastball hitter. And being away, we didn't like to throw him for strikes. He's going to have to wait back tonight. Two and two. If he puts him there, he's going to be all right. <laughs> In the outside corner. He'll give himself a chance. Normally you see the splits for being away, but more off speed pitches than fastballs. He really doesn't want to throw the fastball unless he has to. Two balls, two strikes to Davis. To right field. Shearholtz. And a good first inning. Ends for the Brewers. They hit it hard, but the Brewers able to score a couple of runs while the Cubs throw the ball all over Miller Park. Good start for the home team after one. Here at Miller Park and tonight's time of the game winner. Hammy's Roadside Bar in Janesville, Wisconsin. If they call the Brewers in the next 24 hours, they get 40 Miller Lite beer pen tickets to a Brewers home game. This offer courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Lite. Good start for Matt Garza. Good start for the Brewers tonight. Garza retired the Cubs in order. A couple of strikeouts along the way. Brewers put two on the board. That's our story moving to the second inning of play. Starling Castro will lead things off. Castro has been 
offensively. Very productive. In fact, more hits by a short by a shortstop. More hits than anybody. Approaching 600, 576 to be exact. His yeah. numbers actually were down last year, but yeah. overall he's been productive. Well, not only offensively, but defensively. It was a focus issue, I think, last year for Castro, and he's they say he's coming into spring training with a different outlook on things and got himself to work and off to a good start. An all-star in 2011 and 2012. One of the toughest outs at one point that the Brewers faced throughout the year. Good looking young hitter. Could run, hit the ball the other way, had some pop. Yeah, 2011, he hit 307 overall. 283 the following year, and then down to 245 last year. There's a chopper to his counterpart. And that's out number one. Now time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag #WispFanPhoto for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. Nate Sheerholtz steps in for Chicago right fielder. On Tuesday, he had what proved to be the game-winning RBI against Arizona. The Diamondbacks team came to Chicago. Scuffling in a bad way, but maybe starting to show signs of turning it around. Arizona taking games three and four. The series down at Wrigley Field. Only time you have Paul Goldschmidt in the lineup, it, uh, it's it's going to get going. That guy's something else. A lot of power. Yes, he does. Sure, Holtz was hitless yesterday, struck out three times. This is game one of a six game road swing for the Cubbies. After this series, they move on to Cincinnati for three games against the Reds. After this weekend, the Brewers on the road for a week, three in St. Louis and four in Cincinnati. There's a shot foul at first, and I think he's going to need some new lumber. Yeah, Garza with that cut fastball right in on his fists, and Sheerholtz couldn't get the bat head out. Sheerholtz coming over from the San Francisco Giants. One of the opportunity to play every day. Well, he's gotten that opportunity the last couple of years. Cubs has some uh, young talent down in the minor leagues that they're waiting on. Boy, they really do. That's what the fan base, that's what the organization, that's what Theo Epstein and company are waiting for. They've, they're hoping for it. They have some prospects that are about as highly touted as they come. Guys like Chris Bryant, Javier Baez, Jorge Soler. They're just trying to get through it right now. Make sure those guys are ready. Don't want to bring them up too soon and have them experience too much failure up at the big league level. Well, one of their prospects, CJ Edwards, a little shoulder fatigue. They're going to keep him quiet here for the next couple of weeks. But all things considered, it, it wasn't as bad as it might have been. A little bit of relief from the Cubs side of things regarding Edwards. And the Brewers experienced that with Brandon Kinsler, who came off the DL today. Yes, he is back and available. Ron Renicky for the game, talking about him. They not ready to use him on back-to-back -back nights, but certainly Rockets. It's an arm that they could use right now. This bullpen isn't it isn't overtaxed, right. but it's been busy. But it's good to have him back. It's, it's just that, as you mentioned, you can't use him too much right away. I mean they. I think they dodged the bullet with Kinsler. They were hoping it wasn't serious. As it turned out right now, it's not serious. There's a good pitch by Matt Garza, off speed pitch. Well, he's got it working tonight. I mean, it usually takes him a while to get the curveball going, and he's got it in a pretty good spot right now. Already three strikeouts. And here's a fastball this time. Again, on the inner half of the plate, there's the foul ball, but the strikeout. 
way out in front of the breaking pitch. And Garza will square off with Junior Lake. First pitch swing, a fly ball to center. Gomez has it tracked. And it's another one, two, three inning for Matt Garza. Through an inning and a half, two nothing, the Brewers. Our non-stoppable play brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Brewers got it cranked up in inning number one. Gomez and Jeanette. That was ruled a double. This play by Junior Lake. And Ryan Braun laces a single. Bring around Scooter. Brewers off and rolling. Not Renicky. In a good mood so far. Bottom of the second. 2-0. The home team. Isle Overbay. Which thing started? Bottom half of inning number two. Lyle had a couple of pinch hits. Consecutive nights against San Diego. In the lineup last night, win one for two. One and one to Overbay. To center field. This is Sweeney. Out number one. The Inueva settling after the first three Brewers in the opening inning reached. He's able to retire Ramirez, Lucroy, and Davis, and he starts the second by getting Overbay to fly to center. Yeah, he dodged the bullet. I mean, you know, Lake should have had that line drive off the bat of Jeanette, so it shouldn't really be a one to nothing game. But once he settles in, gets those breaking pitches down in the strike zone, he can be tough. He's had success against the Brewers. Gene Segura that three run shot and it was a laser that Wednesday night game against San Diego first home run of the year and working on his approach a little bit he and Johnny Naren in the batting cage I was talking to Johnny before the game today and he says Segura gets here very early he worked they're working hard in the batting cage to try and 
know, groove that swing. You know, something that they've been working on, keeping himself inside the baseball, and they broke that down today on Brewers Live pregame. And Segura to start the season was kind of coming around the baseball, having the bat head out in front of the hands, and because of that, he was getting a lot of ground balls, some strikeouts, and starting to work on it a little bit. Trying to get back to that approach that he had a year ago. That's well hit. But right on it is Junior Lake, and this time he'll take care of it. Brewers did it pretty well early on. Two men out in the second. Man, making some pretty good contact. Hey, the Brew Crew returns to Miller Park to take on the Diamondbacks, led by home run champion Paul Goldschmidt. That's Monday, May 5th. Through Wednesday, May 7th, reserve your seats today at 414-902-4000 or click on to Brewers.com. And Brewers, after that seven-game road trip, come back to Miller Park on May 5th. Brewers continue to get a healthy dose, or will certainly get a healthy dose, of Central Division play in the next week plus. Obviously, you've already had a fair amount of it, but on to St. Louis, and then they'll match up with the Reds for the first time. The series starts next Thursday. Matt Garza. Looking for his first hit this season. Three balls, one strike. Back to the box. A stab by Villanueva. After Villanueva struggled early, he has retired the last six. We are through two. Two nothing. The Brewers. Tomorrow, MLB on Fox Sports 1 is back with a doubleheader. The Angels will take on Derek Jeter and the Yankees, and then Andrew McCutcheon and the Pirates will square off against the Cardinals. The action starts tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. Central on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Now, a big event here today at Miller Park with the unveiling of Bob Uecker's front row statue. I'm sitting here in the empty seat right at the very, very top of Miller Park next to the new Bob Uecker statue. There was a great ceremony today, and now this empty seat provides a photo opportunity for fans. The donations will go to Brewers Charities as well as the Make-A-Wish Foundation, a very special organization for Bob Uecker. And Rock, you are a part of the ceremony. We'll have Robin Yount and Raleigh Fingers in the booth later. So uh, it was a great day for Bob Uecker here at Miller Park. Yeah, no doubt about that, Sophia. I was up there. You know, Uecker was sitting in that uh, seat next to his statue. You couldn't tell who the real Uecker was. <laughs> They were both sitting up there, a couple of clones. <laughs> what a great day it was for you.
and uh, you know, certainly deserving. We're so lucky to have a guy like Bob Euchre in town and been here a long, long time. He's seen just about everything here in Milwaukee, and a uh, you know, good day to celebrate his success here in Milwaukee. It's the first time I've had a chance to be around him on, on anything that resembles a regular basis. Captain obvious statement of the night. The man is hilarious. Yeah, he is, it, isn't he? it doesn't have to be behind a microphone in front of a camera. He is. He is a treasure and always will be. Ryan Sweeney. leads off of the Cubs here in the third. Matt Garza has retired the first six he has faced. Striking out three along the way. This has popped up. No play for Ramirez. Yeah, it really does look like he has, you know, good location. He's got some life on his fastball. He's been able to find his breaking pitch early. That's something that's avoided him in his first handful of starts. It's taken him a while to get to that curveball, but he got a good one early on. The author of a no hitter in his career, member of the Tampa Bay Rays. Yeah, he had that deciding game assignment too in the series against the Red Sox. The guy who's performed on the really big stage. One of the acquisitions that surprised some folks around baseball. Made some people around here pretty happy. I think mean, Garza would come to the walk. And it changed the perception of this ball club right away when Garza signed here and all of a sudden, you have a rotation that's as solid as any in the National League, particularly the National League Central. Bullpen's been good. Because of the acquisition of Garza, Thornburg in the bullpen, and that's just helped the pen. And Thornburg has been just outstanding. And you can go down the line here, but the way he has accepted and embraced the role. Mm -hmm. As he sits there with uh, Somebody celebrating a birthday today. Yeah, Wei Che Wong. Wei Chung Wong. Uh, was he 22 today? 22. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember 22. Me too either. long ago. Yeah. <laughs> 22 and in the big leagues. Life is good. Yeah. Full count to Sweeney. Here's the first base runner of the night for the Cubs. That's the uh, board here at Miller Park. The crowd acknowledging Wei Chung Wong. He's having a good time in the major leagues. He and his interpreter Jay. Jay Shi. There he is on the right. Well, winning is fun, but this, this is a group of guys just in the week plus that that I jumped on the train here. They really enjoy each other. Yeah, a good chemistry. Yeah, good chemistry is right. It's overrated in baseball, but nice to have it when it's there. Huh? This pitch has popped up. Ramirez, one out. But the way they're winning, it just gives you a sense that these guys know they're all pulling on the same end of the rope. Every single one of them. I mean, you're doing that, you're going to have good chemistry. Everybody piggybacking off the other. Good friendly competition in that starting rotation. Hitters realize if they don't get the job done, the guy behind them is going to do it. And that's kind of the way it's been going in the first 22 games. Carlos Villanueva, the hitter. Ryan Sweeney at first. And one out. Oh and one. You know, wave trying to move Sweeney up. Brewers with a two run first. Garza retired the first six. Issued a lead off walk here in the third to Sweeney. 
lays down the butt, and the play is at first. Two men out. Hey, Zuba's Palooza is back. Cheer on the Brew Crew in style. In your brand new Zuba's pants, that's Friday, May 30th, as the Brewers battle the Cubs. To get your very own Brewers Zuba's pants, reserve your spot at Brewers.com slash special events. Zuba's Palooza. The countdown continues. Yes, sir. Are you ready? <laughs> I am ready. Jumping in the Zuba's and doing a game. Just kind of turn back the clock, right? Big in the 90s. It all comes back. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. We fessed up. We, we still have from back in, quote, the day. And we got it. <laughs> Mine are a little small at this point <laughs> since yeah. the last time I had those on. <laughs> Bonifacio with a base hit to center. Gomez charging. Here's the throw to the plate. Not in time. And the Cubs are on the board as Ryan Sweeney comes around to score. RBI single for Bonifacio, who moves to second on the throw. Yeah, he stays hot. You know, fastball up. Bonifacio slaps it into center field. So the walk, the executed bunt. Got Sweeney to second base. And Bonifacio with a base hit. Carlos Gomez. A throw in the home plate, but that allows Bonifacio to get to second. 30 hits for him already this season. That's third in the National League. So off to a very nice start for this Cubs team. It doesn't score a ton of runs. It's in the bottom third in a lot of offensive categories in the National League. The Brewer lead cut in half. Valbuena. Down a strike. That got the umpire Gary Cedarstrom. You see Luke concerned about his uh, masked mate back there. He's all right. That's a sweet looking mask that the home plate umpire had. That is. He's styling. Got a little style points to it. That right on the shoulder. And he didn't flinch. Did you see him? Uh, he didn't. He just hung right in there. He said, That's all you got? <laughs> A little role reversal there too. It was Lucroy stolen for a second or two to make sure the umpire was all right. Yeah. As opposed to the umpire dusting off the plate, and the catcher takes one. Luis Valbuena, hop to Ramirez in the first. Pops up again. This time it'll be Lucroy. And that'll do it for the Cubs in the third. They pick up a run. The Brewers will have a top of the order. Gomez, Jeanette, and Braun. When we. After the inning, 
Two to one Milwaukee as the Brewers will send the top of the order. Gomez, Jeanette, and Braun. A home run leaderboard brought to you by the Wisconsin Lottery. Ryan Braun continues to lead the way with six. Followed by Gomez and Reynolds, five apiece. And Ramos Ramirez has three. It's kind of the way the home run leaderboard would uh, look if you were to guess before the season started. Probably no map it out that way. No big yeah. surprises like a year ago. Gomez with a single, a stolen base. He's scored a run. Brewers got off to a great start of that first inning, and there's a check swing, and this will fall. Base hit. Gomez, his second hit. Big turn, and he'll hold. Thought about it. Always <laughs> aggressive. You never know if he's <laughs> going to hold or not. I mean, he went about a third of the way there, but nobody was at first base, so he could take a little bit more. Off the bag, a check swing on a slider, and well, when you're going good, you're going good. And a check swing base hit, Tierholtz playing deep out in right field. So nobody at first, so why not? He's taking a look at it and gets back. Scooter Jeanette had the RBI double. Hard hit ball to left that was misplayed by Junior Lake. Lost it probably in the bank, the bank of lights or, or something, but just went right through him, rolled a double, and it scored Gomez. After Gomez stole a base, looking to steal again. That continues to swing the bat with authority. Average now up to 328. Doesn't much walk much to start with, but you don't expect him to walk hardly at all batting in front of Ryan Braun. These guys are going to throw him strikes. They want to put him on to get the Braun. That's a pretty good seat that number two spot in front of that guy right there. You're going to get some pitches to hit. Ball one to Jeanette. Carlos Villanueva gave up a couple of runs in the first. Tired the Brewers in order in the second. Gomez begins the third. A single to right. <laughs> Always gives you something to think about. Carlos is on base. Yeah, try to. Yeah. Me and was going to try and be as quick as he can to home plate to give Castillo a fighting chance to throw him out. Sometimes when you do that, try to be too quick, you make mistakes. That's it. Well, right field. Sherholtz is there and runs it down at the track. You make mistakes like that. Just missed it. He didn't miss a home run by much. Was that four seam fastball? 90 is all he gets on it. But Scooter, a little bit down on the end of the bat, and that's the only thing that kept it in the ballpark. Ryan Braun had an RBI knock in the first. Brought Jeanette around. Up to 18 RBIs on the season. Mentioned in the open that Ryan has had a lot of success in his career against the Cubs. Getting close to 350, 17 homers. Now 77 RBIs and has always done well at Wrigley Field. He likes hitting there. Brewers have the return trip down to Wrigley in about three weeks. Brewers have won 22 of the last 27 meetings with the Cubs. There's a stretch where. This was a one-sided series the other way, but the last three 
It's belong to the Brewers. Here comes the 1 0 to Braun. And this is where Gomez needs to just stay put and let Braun take a good swing at something right here on a 2 0 count. In there, a strike. Talk about Cubs pitching and being a wave of struggles, but the other two starters that the Brewers will see in this series. Been effective. Travis Wood, Jason Hamill. Wood ZRA 252 and Hamill 260. Yeah, it hadn't been the starting pitching that's been the problem, that's for sure. We've been talking about that quite a bit. Along with a chopper in the hole, Castro, the play is at first and it is in time. And Kerwin Danley rings him up, but Ryan Braun thinks he's safe. And Ron Renicky will. Take the slow walk and now a slow jog to the mound. Give a little time to take a look at that replay. And Johnny Naren talking to the guys in the clubhouse. John Shelby, one of them. Yeah, he's safe. Yeah, I think that uh, he's got. I think that's going to be overturned. He's safe by about a foot. Yeah, I'm thinking there is enough. No doubt. I think that. Uh, well, you never know. I mean. The first look seemed more conclusive. The more conclusive of the two, right here. Foot's on the bag right there, and that ball's got another foot to go to get to Rizzo's glove. I think that's a no-brainer. This isn't going to take very long. Gary Cedarstrom is the crew chief. There's a replay review on a ball hit into the hole at short. Brian Braun busted up the line. And yeah, Braun knew it right away. He turned around and told Renegade, get him thrown out here. And you see the replay, the crowd seeing the replay on the big screen. The umpires that you see there have nothing to do of, about overturning it or confirming a call. It's all going on in New York. They're just going to you know, get the results. The options are call stands, call confirmed, call overturned. And it's taking a little bit of time here to review this. Foot down, baseball not in the glove yet. There it is. I mean, clear as day, and it's taken an awful long time for the umpires back in New York. It is an umpiring crew. There are two crews in New York: Manning that control station, the control center, and looking at the re replays. And the review continues. Been overturned. Yeah. No surprise. And that'll be a base hit for Ryan Braun instead of an out, a base hit. Ryan Braun, I guess he's saying, what took him so he long? Said, I knew that. <laughs> Should have saved you the trouble. So the Brewers have runners at first and second. One out for Aramis Ramirez. And it looks like they want one more little chat here is uh, Cedarstrom the crew chief and asked him to go back on headset. So we're not quite ready to resume play. Well 
But I'm with you, Rock. It looked at two of those angles really seem to show that, that that Ryan was clearly safe. And now we're ready to go. Man, not sure what they were talking about the second time, but nothing's going to change. As long as they get it right. Yeah, as long as they get it right, I think that's what replay is all about. That's an obvious one that got overturned and took a little bit longer than we thought it should have. Ramirez hit the ball hard in the first. Right at Sheerholtz. A threat for the Brewers in the bottom of the third. They lead it one to nothing, or two to one rather, looking for more. Being away with being very conscious of Gomez at second base. Great speed on the bases for Milwaukee. And don't think Gomez isn't thinking about stealing third base. Ramirez, the center. Sweeney. Two outs. Jonathan Lucroy step to the plate. Gomez stays at second. Ryan Braun, the runner at first. Lucroy grounded to short in inning number one. First, Braun able to get back. Ryan Braun reaching on an overturned call, able to leg out an infield single. One strike and nothing to Luke Roy. Hard hit and through into left field. Here comes Gomez. He's in. Three to one. The Brewers. Yeah, able to wait back a little bit longer this time as opposed to the six to three put out. Luke Roy able to find the hole and score Gomez. This is a fastball by Villanueva. Supposed to be on the outside corner, leaked over the middle, and Luke Brandt would get a base hit with two out. So uh, Brew is able to come up big once again with a man in scoring position. Now three hits in that department and only in the third inning. Eighth RBI of the year for Jonathan Lucroy. Ron at second. Lucroy at first for Chris Davis. The fly ball to right to end the first inning. So bouncer to Castro. Play is at second. And that'll do it for the Brewers in the third, but they pick up another run. We are through three. Brewers three. Comes one.
Wisconsin is brought to you by Piggly Wiggly, the official supermarket of Fox Sports Wisconsin. By Marshfield Clinic. Don't just live, shine. And by First Supply. With 115 years of service in 28 locations, professional contractors choose First Supply. Move to the top of the fourth at Miller Park. Brewers putting another run on the board in the bottom half of the third. Now three to one, Milwaukee. The crowd settling in for this weekend series. Anthony Rizzo will lead off for Chicago here in the fourth. Rizzo, one of three Garza strikeout victims for the first three innings of the game. As Rock mentioned, this is a Cubs team with an eight man bullpen. They actually lost one of their position players earlier in the week, Justin Ruggiano. He's on the DL. Outfielder with a strained hamstring, so with him down, they actually brought up not one but two in Triple A Iowa. Two pitchers, Zach Roscup and Neil Ramirez. I mean, trying to you know figure out a combination out there, get somebody in that bullpen is going to get somebody out. Can't go very long with only four on your bench. You really can't. The Brewers are doing it right now because of the Maldonado suspension. But five's not that many. You know, considering every team just about has seven relief pitchers in their bullpen, five starters, 12 man pitching staffs. And it wasn't that long ago where you had a 10 man pitching staff, five starters, five relievers. Can you imagine that these days? <laughs> not now. No way you could get by with that. Yes, this is game three of five for Martin Maldonado. Back to the benches clearing incident last Sunday in Pittsburgh. Rizzo takes strike three call. And Rizzo didn't think so. I didn't like it, but you know, a little too close to take with two strikes. Fox Tracks has it off the plate, but it doesn't matter what Fox Tracks has. This depends on what this matters with Gary Cedarstrom thinks. And he rings him up. Out number one here in the fourth. Starling Castro swing and a miss. Is it quickly out in front two strikes Showing a lot of strikes tonight. Showing a lot of confidence in all of his stuff. I haven't seen any change ups. See the curveball the slide of the fastball. Locating the fastball extremely well so far. Mentioned Rizzo being one of those Cubs under contract for a long time. Similar story with Castro. As a deal through 2019 and a club option for 2020. Young talent, some young talent at the major league level, and they believe a lot of help on the way. All right. And those are two good guys to have as the face of your franchise Rizzo and Sterling Castro. Out of play, heads up. This young man, when he's motivated and focused, is one of the best in the business, Castro. As we mentioned, he did struggle at the plate a year ago. But he's also a two-time All-Star. So at his best, he is among the best. Right. A bouncer to third, Ramirez. Two outs. 
Let's check in with Sophia Minnerts. Matt, you can catch every strikeout, every game ender, and every history-making moment on MLB Whip Around weeknights at 9 p.m. Central on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. And Matt Garza talking about the starting rotations that he fell right in, starting with spring training, says it's an easygoing group. And he says what's working for them right now is they have the same mindset that they're playing for one another. They don't want to be the guy that lets the rotation down. And so they spend a lot of time. They watch each other's bullpens. He says they've developed a great chemistry here early in the season and feels that's part of why they've been successful as a group. We talked about Castro when he's at his best, when Garza's is at his best. That's something pretty good, too. I mean, no kidding. You know, Kyle Lewis brought that over from the St. Louis Cardinals. Cardinals did that. For many years, you know, started with Dave Duncan. Starters will go down there, watch each other, take a look, and maybe learn for themselves what they can do better. Maybe help a starting pitcher on his side session. Not just a pitching coach with suggestions, but the other four guys in that rotation. That's what you call teamwork. Nate Sheerholt struck out in the second inning. Has a one and one count now. Ours is allowed just the one hit. It was to Bonifacio, and it was a run scoring single in the third. Sherholt struck out three times yesterday. We'll lift this one to shallow left Chris Davis and another very good inning for Matt Garza and the Brewers three and a half it's three to one the crew. Brewers Community Foundation and the Leadership Council present the drive for charity today through Sunday. Fans can bring new hats, mittens, and scarves to the ballpark. For every donation of hats, mittens, scarves, or a $5 contribution, fans will get a commemorative one-of-a-kind pin featuring Carlos Gomez. To the bottom of the fourth we go. Brewers out in front. Three to one. What did we do before cell phones? Check text messages, Twitter. Enjoyed what yeah. we were doing at that moment. <laughs> right? Paid attention to who we were with. Right, you know, yeah. right. Talk to each other. <laughs> it's true. Very. Lyle Overbay. Winning off a of home fourth. Seven, eight, and nine in the order. Well, it used to be where you got in your car, you drove off somewhere. That was when you had time to yourself. You turned on the radio, but mm -hmm. 
These days, you, you go down the freeway and look at the cars next to you. Everybody's on the phone or they've got their head down texting. Or they do. Crazy. It is. <laughs> People plan to make phone calls now when they're in the car. Yeah. Speaking on behalf of my day job, I'm hoping that some of them have the radio on still when they're in their car. But you're right. It's changed a lot. You're, you're, right. You're talking to talking to your buddy. You get the Bluetooth. That's one thing. You yes. Know, you have to say, you know, the texting, that's a little bit too far. Right there with you. Shouldn't do that. That's, that is exactly right. One and two to Overbay. I was proud of you, though. I mean, you sent me a text the other day. I responded to uh, two old timers that, uh, you know, <laughs> get it all of a sudden. It, it still takes me a while to do that. I, yeah. I don't know how many typos I had in that met in that message, but I'm usually good for two or three. They correct themselves, though, don't they? Uh, with me most of the time, but I think so. I overload it. <laughs> Bounces up there, two and two the count. We are slowly but surely, you and I, Rock, are advancing into today's world. Right. The cell yeah. phones, the text. It's a good way to communicate, as long as you're not in the car, yes. as long as you're not doing a game on television. I've seen BA work up here. Now there's a multitasker. Yeah. He's, uh, oh yeah. He's texting. He's looking up this, that, and the other. As I said last week, or earlier this week, I'm just trying to count one, two, three. Simple things right now. So far, so good. <laughs> it's early. Over Bay hangs in there. Count remains full. A lot of uh, information at your disposal everywhere, particularly up here in the booth and. No way you can use all of it. Only when it applies, and sometimes when it applies, it's too late. You can't find it. <laughs> well, with my mess, I'm surprised I can find anything right now. But yeah, it's <laughs> a lot of papers. A <laughs> lot of papers. Yeah. <laughs> it's what rookie MLB broadcasters do. Well, at least this rookie. Well struck from over bay, but a foul ball. And Lyle able to wait back, but not long enough on that breaking pitch from being a waiver. About three feet foul. Good matchup going on here to start the bottom of the fourth. Brewers with two runs in the first. One more in the third. That's it. Well to right. Sheerholtz going back, and it is gone. Solo shot. Lyle over Bay, and it's four to one. Milwaukee. Well, a ten pitch at bat. Finally, over Bay able to get a fastball and knock it out of here. There you see the Brewer dugout with the. O's. There you go. Lyle over Bay. His first. That's the first home run for Over Bay since last September, September 9th. Here's Gene Segura trying to lay one down, but foul. A 10 pitch at bat, a fastball right down the middle. Here it is. And Lyle over Bay able to center on it. Nice easy swing by Lyle. Well, jumps off his bat and over that Cubs bullpen. Wisconsin Lottery Powerball home run count. For Lyle Overbay now at one. He gives his team a three run lead. Bottom of inning number four. It's hit number seven for the Brewers in this game. Three of them coming in the first. Hard hit, but right to Rizzo. He'll go down and get it. Out number one. 
that tough break. That's exactly what Johnny Naren and Segura have been working on. Staying inside the baseball, got a pitch up out over the plate, hit it hard, but not rewarded. But a good at bat by Segura. Matt Garza with a healthy cut. Bounce back to the mound in the second. Oh, and two. Garza goes down on strikes. And that's the first strike out of the game. For Carlos Villanueva. Good night so far for Carlos Gomez. Has that average back on the right side of 300. The shallow right. Sheerholtz won't get it. Gomez, big turn. He's digging for second. And he's in. <laughs> Hustling all the way. How about those two hits? Huh? <laughs> Just drop it. Well, they can't get it. Dumping it in no man's land. And Carlos Gomez with his wheels able to hustle in there for a double. Throw very high from Nate Shearholz. And I don't think they would have had him anyway. There it is. A little fist job. Fastball in. Put it in the lost triangle out there and right. And Gomez hustling in for a double. So Gomez three for three tonight. And an RBI chance for Scooter Jeanette, who has hit the ball hard. Double in the first. Fly out to right in the third. Out of play for strike one. Lyle Overbay began this inning with a solo shot to right. After Segura and Garza were retired, Gomez plopped a double to right. is going to need a chat with his catcher. It's in Castillo. Very rugged start to Villanueva's season. 10.93 earned run average coming into the game. His manager Rick Renteria looking on. Yeah, four earned runs in four innings tonight. First three hitters of the night for the Brewers reached. Gomez single, a Jeanette double, and a Braun single. And Villanueva showed signs as though he was going to settle down, but the Brewers have touched him up again with single runs in the third. They have won so far here in the fourth. Playing pretty deep for Jeanette, particularly in center field. Sweeney way back here in center. I know that uh, Jeanette's got some pretty good pop, but I think the Cubs are thinking on a base hit they're not going to throw Gomez out anyway, so why not just cover the extra base hit? Two balls, one strike to Jeanette.
Gomez is going. The pitch slapped the second by Nafasio bobbles. He's able to make the play, and that'll do it for the Brewers in the fourth. While over Bay goes deep for the first time this season. The O is. Move to the top of the fifth at Miller Park. So far, so good for the Brewers as they lead the Cubs four to one. Our Carson.com trivia question: Who holds the Brewers' record for most saves in the month of April? Carson.com trivia question: Who holds the Brewers' record for most saves in the month of April? K. Rod's got to be close. <laughs> he's, he's got nine, right? Nine for nine. Oh, Doc. Can't be uh, much more than that, I would think. Junior Lake. Getting off the fifth for the Cubs. Fly to center. In inning number two. Very good first four innings for Matt Garza. It's allowed just one hit. Cubs did. Get a run on the board in the third. Matt has walked one and struck out four. Blake trying to bunt his way aboard. He's down 0 and 2. Will be followed by Ryan Sweeney and Wellington Castillo. Cubs come to town with a 7 and 14 record. They've lost six of their first eight on the road. It starts a six game trip for Chicago. One and two. Lake has traveled well early and he didn't play a lot of road games, but he's hitting better than 300 away from Wrigley Field. Interesting player, Junior Lake. He has some big time power. And as you can see right there, swinging a miss and breaks the bat right in half. He shows the power in another way. Right. That is strikeout number five for Matt Garza. Upset with himself, and here he goes. Bingo. <laughs> I'll have Bo Jackson. Ryan Sweeney.
his second year with the Cubs signed a two year deal in the offseason. Signed a minor league deal a year ago after the Red Sox let him go. It's a ground ball foul. Good player Sweeney. I mean he's a guy that will control center field pretty well for you. Not a big base stealer make some contact. And Look at his Cubs outfield. And you got Sheerholtz and Lake and Sweeney. Just haven't gotten a lot offensively. And that's the thing that I was going to say. Yeah, you need some big offense out of your outfield, particularly left and right. And that's a broken bat bloop into left field, a base hit. As we check in once again with Sophia Minutes. Matt Fox Sport supports the Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater Milwaukee. We had a great event yesterday at the Marcus Southgate Cinema. A special screening for the Boys and Girls Club of our baseball in the Dominican Republic. Gene Segura featured the Fox Sports Wisconsin girls were there and Bernie Brewer and the Chorizo. So they really enjoyed watching the show and Gene recorded a special message for the the kids on what he wanted them to take away and we got to answer some questions. So it was a great event with the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Milwaukee yesterday. Yeah, a lot of fun, a lot of fun for a lot of the young youngsters to meet another youngster. Well, nice to so young. Yeah, nice to see Sophia and Gene Segura working on an off day. Huh? <laughs> Good for them. Wellington Castillo, the hitter. Sweeney single, just the second hit of the game for the Cubs. Pretty good curveball slider combination for Matt Garza so far tonight. Locating the fastball well. I was listening to Jerry Augustine talking about the importance of that fastball for Garza. And Brewers live pregame today, and he certainly has been able to spot that pitch just about all night. Down and away, up and in, got in on the hands that time of Castillo. Facing his former team here tonight with the Cubs till late July. Made the big deal with Matt to the Rangers. The ball two strikes to Wellington Castillo, the Cubs catcher. Another strikeout victim for Garza. That's number six. He went slider, fastball up and in, slider down and away, and got Castillo on the strikeout. Good pitch. Here it is. Going straight down. Not a big break, but very late. And took a little bit off. Castillo out in front. Sack bunt from Villanueva in the second inning. Helped set up a run. Allowed Emilio Bonifacio to drive home Ryan Sweeney. With the Cubs first and so far only run of the game. Guards are going right to it. Here's the 0-2. Popped him up. Lucroy takes charge. And that'll do it for the Cubs in the fifth. We are halfway through this series opener at Miller Park with the Brewers leading 4-1.
Here's tonight's Jimmy John's freaky fast delivery of the game. Carlos Gomez swinging a mean back tonight. Singled and scored in the first. Likewise in the third and then drops a double in the fourth. Three for three so far for Carlos Gomez tonight, helping his team to a four to one lead. Moving to the bottom of the fifth. Smart hitter tonight. As my grandfather used to tell, tell, tell me, hit him where they ain't. Hit him where they ain't. And that's what he's doing. <laughs> he certainly is. Three, four, and five in the Brewers' order to face Carlos Villanueva, Braun Ramirez, and Lucroy. And Villanueva continues to throw strikes. He's only walked one batter in six appearances this year. Four of them start, so a strike throwing machine is being away with. The Brewers have been able to go to work against him to the tune of four runs and eight hits through the first four innings. Ron has a couple of them RBI single in the first, and then an infield hit that took replay to overturn the call. Starling Castro trying to throw him out. Braun was originally called out. Even he thought right away, go to the replay. They did. And it showed that Braun was able to beat the throw. Top of the order, six for eight so far tonight. That's not bad. Well, that'll, that'll give you a chance to win some games. Ron has added 17 points to his average so far tonight. The 2 1. That's it well to right, and a base hit for Braun. He's 3 for 3. 7 for 9. Carlos being away with started running out with an off speed pitch, a changeup. Well, then he had to go with a fastball. There's a changeup right there. Two and oh. Fastball got to two and one. Another fastball out over the plate, up in the zone, and Ronnie smokes it in the right field. You can see how deep Shearholtz is playing, not able to come in and make the catch. Lead off single for Braun. Ramos Ramirez. That's why we say, you know, being away, we cannot afford to work behind an account. Nobody can, but when you're only throwing, you know, 88 to 90 with your fastball and you're in a fastball count, you're in trouble. Look out. Is saying I can get out of the way of 87 miles an hour. <laughs> Add a few to it, maybe not. Juan has two stolen bases on the year. Cubs have only thrown out one trying to steal coming into this game. I think across baseball is becoming more difficult to throw out base runners. First of all, not many guys are running, and the only guys that are running are the big base stealers. <laughs> running with a reason. Right? And you know, pitchers are having a difficult time holding them close. When you look at these stats and you say, what's the matter with these catchers? But you know, a lot of the times it's not their fault. Coming from a catcher. So take that for what it's worth. Very fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, every time I see percentages, you know, if it's a Molina or Martin, even Rivera, the limited time he played, I always try to I take it for what it is. But if you've got a you've got a pitcher with a slow delivery, you know this a lot better than I ever right, would. You, you have no, no chance. You have no chance at all. And you know, the Cardinals have 
always had a pitching staff that is very conscious of holding runners close and being quick to home plate. To take nothing away from Molina, but even Molina needs help from his pitching staff. Braun's on the move. Pitch is taken. Braun with a steal as the throw goes through and into center field. Oh, the running game and what it can do to defenses. And the first two throws by Castillo, not very good. The Gomez stolen base in the first, and that wasn't a very good throw there. Arm dropped, it's short hop second base. Good pitch to throw on, just a terrible throw, and Sterling Castro not able to get there. Actually, that was Bonifacio, and that'll be a stolen base and an E2, allowing Braun to get the third. Three and one the count to Ramirez. The infield in a fly ball to left. Lake the catch. Braun tags. Here he comes. And it's 5 1 Milwaukee. RBI number 17 on the year for Aramis Ramirez. And the Brewers manufacturing a run. Stolen base error. Sack fly. So Brewers with a four run lead. Oh, back to catching base dealers. Rocket Brewers have been pretty decent in that area so far. When Luke Croy has done, Maldonado has caught one of two. Luke Croy four of 13, but I guess they should credit the pitchers there too for right, getting again. Chance. I mean, you can uh, you can't blame catchers for all the stolen bases, and you can certainly you know don't give them all the credit when they do catch a guy stealing. It's a team effort. Pitcher, catcher, and a middle infielder who handles the throw the proper way. That can help you too. Brewers now with a four run lead. Sharply hit, but foul. Bottom of the fifth in St. Louis with the Cardinals leading the Pirates one to nothing. Brewers with a four and a half game lead on St. Louis going into tonight's play. A 16 and six record. Brewers still possess baseball's best record. It's never too early to talk standings when you're in first place. No, not when you're in first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You bet you. Luke Roy with that third inning RBI single now has eight on the year. In a way, we're not sure about the count. They have a three and one on the board. I think it's two and two, isn't it? I believe that's what they are flashing. Yeah. Jonathan fouls it straight back. Luke upset with himself, shaking his head. Had a hanger right down the middle. Jonathan settling back in. Base is empty. One out in the fifth. Full count to Jonathan Lucroy. Here it comes. And we'll do it one more time. Davis on deck. Ryan 
Braun started the inning with a single to right, stole second, advanced to third on a throwing error, and came in on a sack fly from Aramis Ramirez. Base hit for Luke Croy. His second of the night. Let's get the answer to our carsoup.com trivia question. Who holds the Brewers record for most saves in the month of April? Ah. Francisco Cordero. So, Rock, you're right. Uh, K-Rod is in hot pursuit. He had plenty of time. Is it 25th? Got some time to pick up a couple of saves to uh, surpass Coco Cordero in his 40 plus save season with the Brewers. Six games left in this month of April. So a chance in the team this Brewers team has played a fair amount of close games to say the least. I think Ron Reddick is just uh, ready for you know a nice easy win. Give Cord uh, Cordero, yeah, Rodriguez a day <laughs> off to some guys in the bullpen. Even though with the team had a day off yesterday, you'd still love to give a couple of those guys in a pen a night off again. He was saying before the game, that it's it's not maybe the bullpen isn't as busy as you think or it would seem, but it's been busy enough as you take a look at the most saves in this month, Brewers history. That's a pretty good list right there. And sack man back in 87, part of that 13 uh, 0 start. Davis with a fly ball to right. Nate Sheerholtz. Two men out. Lyle Overbay. His first home run since last September. That was how the Brewers started the bottom of the fourth. Last September with the Yankees, mind you. Right, Brewers getting some decent production out of their first base spot now. Lyle Overbay starting to heat up. Reynolds has hit some big home runs. Over big time upgrade from a year ago. Overbay has come off the board, came off the bench in the San Diego series, a couple of pinch hits. A 10 pitch at bat ends with a home run on the fastball down the middle. Overbay's first of the season. A one and one count. Lou Croy at first, two outs in the fifth. To left field. That'll drop. Second hit for Overbay as Lucroy on his way to third. He's in. Overbay to second. And the Brewers looking for more in the bottom of the fifth. And a little flare out there in the right field. Junior Lake threw to the wrong base, allowing Overbay to get to second. That's going to hurt the Brewers. There's a change up that time. Right off the end of the bat. He keeps that bat in the hitting zone a nice long time nice level swing and a base hit now the Cubs have are in position to be able to walk Gene Segura with two outs and that would bring up Matt Garza can't imagine that they would pitch the Segura here no conference Bonifacio the second baseman Castillo the catcher Correct. 
Cubs will put Segura on base. Bruce probably would have preferred Lober Bay to stay at first base had Lake thrown to the right base. And now it's going to be up to Matt Garza. Those little things that cost you games. I mean, throwing to the wrong base, throwing the baseball around, and you would never think that the Cubs would only have one error so far here tonight. And that error was this inning. Have not been very strong defensively, particularly yeah. in the outfield. Yeah, that error charged the Castillo when uh, Vaughn on first stole second. Castillo's throw went into center field. Yeah, Junior Lake in the first inning misplayed a fly ball. They're throwing the ball all over Miller Park. Throwing to the wrong base, and that's just fundamentals. Matt Garza into the game with an 092 career average. Last year he did drive in a couple of runs. Being a waiver would be the kind of guy that Garza could get a pretty good swing at. I mean, you don't have to deal with the big velocity or the the hard slider. It's more of a Arsenal of off speed pitches and make a mistake with one up in his own dump it into the outfield. Brewers have 11 hits in this game. The in a four and two thirds innings of work. One and one. Matt with a chance to really bust this open. Little chopper to Castro. And that'll do it for the Brewers in the fifth. But they pick up another run. Garza has some elbow room here. Brewers leading five to one. Tonight. He's already made one slide tonight. That was that uh, Lyle Overbay home run. Hey, this weekend, cheer on the crew at Miller Park as the Cubs continue in this three game series, make the trip north to I 94 for the rivals' first meeting of 2014. For tickets, call 414 902 4000 or visit Brewers.com. I tried to improvise a little bit on that read, and then I kind of messed it up. <laughs> Well, here, to, back here, well. here tomorrow and Sunday, and yeah, forget about that. Make the trip north. We already know that they're here already. Well, come on out. Should be interesting. 
to see what Matt Garza has done tonight. Very effective through the first five. And uh, well, unlike his, some of his, you know, first starts, he really has had good stuff from the beginning. And when I say that, I mean good command of the fastball and his curveball and slider have been very good. First four star took him a while to find that breaking pitch. Julio Bonifacio will start the Cubs half of the sixth. Playing second tonight, but play the outfield. Had a good home stand. It was nine for 22. A couple of hits against the Diamondbacks yesterday and as Run scoring single so far tonight on two trips. And he'll try to lay one down, barehanded by Ramirez. Nice play. Beauty. He knew he was going to do it. He's playing in. Ramirez makes that play extremely well. I mean, he had a tough time with that play because of those knees, the knee issues last year. But he is healthy, moving around well, and he makes that barehand play coming in as well as anybody. See how close he is, even. Before he really made his move toward the baseball, he was playing in with the bag, anticipating the bunt. Garza doing a great job to get out of the way. Luis Valbuena. Twenty-eight year old third baseman for the Cubs. Couple of pop ups so far for him tonight. He's drawn 13 walks so far this season. And just not getting a lot of production out of your third base when you need that. That has to be a spot where you're getting a lot of run production. No home runs, three RBIs. He's a terrific fielder. But you need more than that out of your third baseman. Up the middle, you can, I guess, get away with just some good defense, but your third baseman needs to drive the ball out of the ballpark, driving some runs. He has not done that yet. Two balls, one strike. Garza so far has walked just one. It was Ryan Sweeney in the third, and he eventually came around to score. Carlos Villanueva was able to bunt Sweeney over to second. Bonifacio picked him up. The single to center. Popped up. This is in play. Ramirez. Two outs. And good life on the fastball and a 3 1 count. Hitters count. Got the fastball by him. Garza's pitch count's in pretty good shape. Renegade would love to get at least eight out of him. And at this point, it looks like he might be able to do that. He's allowed just two hits, has walked one, struck out six, including Anthony Rizzo twice. Once swinging, once looking. One and to Rizzo. He's homer three times. He's driven in ten. Coming into this game. Count evens one and one. Looks like the Brewers might be going to the bullpen in the sixth. Being away his pitch count at 98. It's Neil Ramirez, you were looking at. 
was just called up from Triple A Iowa. Along with Zach Roscoe. One and two the count to Anthony Rizzo. To left field, Chris Davis on the run, diving, and oh my goodness, he caught it! What a catch! Chris Davis lays out, and that is highlight reel material. Yes, sir, says Matt Garza. Brewers up by four. Leading the Chicago Cubs five to one so far so good in this opener of the three game weekend series here at Miller Park you know, a special day earlier today Bob Euchre in the front row statue unveiled tell you more about that new pitcher though for the Cubbies Neil Ramirez on the mound now for Chicago yeah this is uh, part of the uh, pitching staff that has given the Cubs so much problems their bullpen Ramirez. Seventh appearance, you see the big earned run average, and uh, Carlos being away with pitch count got away from him just a little bit, and it's up to the Cubs bullpen. Back at the ballpark, a couple of Hall of Famers were in town, thought they'd stop by, so I'm going <laughs> to get out of the way here. <laughs> Robin Yount and Raleigh Fingers here to help uh, celebrate the unveiling of the Bob Euchre front row statue. Uh, gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. Thank you. Nice day today. Uh, you know, you uh, got a chance to, uh, you know, get up there on the apex up there in the terrace. So well, that statue is pretty well up there, isn't it? it it's way up there. The, the, it was a little tricky though when they were both up there and Yuke was sitting next to himself. Right. <laughs> and I was, I, I wasn't sure which one was which. I was. That's what I was saying. And I, I hadn't it. even been drinking yet. <laughs> But nice for you, nice you guys to come in for this. Uh, you know, you know, Bob Euchre certainly. I mean, nobody has to say you know what he's meant no, he's you know, a, to this community and, and to the Brewers. But what, what is Bob Euchre? I'll start with you, Raleigh. Well, what has he meant a, for you? Oh, he's an icon. I mean, uh, to you know, he he would make a ten nothing game seem like a great a great thing going. On. It wasn't boring with Bob on the radio, listening to him in the bullpen. We always had a radio down. At there. his best, right? At his best, and uh, you know, you, I've never seen the man do anything bad. I mean, I've never seen him rip a guy. He's always been first class. Hey, Robin, he's always been one of the guys, hasn't he? Even, oh, yeah. from, the, even from the beginning. You know, and, and, and the players have, have always looked at him that way as, as one of the guys. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's made such an impact around, uh, around Wisconsin, not only, uh, um, you know, over the radio, but for the Brewer organization. You know, he's thrown a lot of batting practice to, yes, to, yeah. to most of us, at least uh, the, the, the older guys. 
But, uh, you know, in a way, he's he's helped our careers uh, on the field. Absolutely. You know, it's a, it's kind of an interesting year for, for, for Bob in that he has announced that he's going to be missing some road games this year. That, that kind of comes as a surprise to everybody, right? It, it comes as a surprise to me. I've been working on him for five years to yeah, cut right, back. Yeah. And I was surprised <laughs> as heck to hear him say that he was going to. Guys like me are in denial that he would cut back, though, because <laughs> you're, you're so used to it. Robin, yeah. Robin you got in a good good little line. Uh, actually, you both did, but your line today in the ceremony, you looked out and said, wow, 50,000 empty seats. <laughs> well, I thought that singer. was fairly fitting for, for a Euchre <laughs> ceremony, right? <laughs> Absolutely. How often can you guys, the teammates from back in, quote, the day, how, how often do you guys get together? Just to uh, we, do so, we do a couple of charity golf tournaments here and there. Uh, Lake Geneva, we uh, we have one. So uh, we get together maybe once a year. Always fun. Stories get better by the year, oh, I would yeah. imagine. Yeah. Huh? yeah, we had a lot of guys last year at uh, Lake Geneva. We must have had about 15 guys from the 81, 82 teams. So uh, we, had a, we had a lot of fun for three days. How often do you guys, you guys keep an eye on, uh, you know, what the, what's going on here in Milwaukee? Kind of a, is, is it a surprise to you? I know, Robin, you spent a lot of time in spring training. Does it yeah. surprise you that the Brewers are 16-6 and six at this point? Well, uh, you know, to say, let's let's face it, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, a, a, that's a really good that's start. A great, that's know? a really good start. Um, it doesn't surprise me that we're a better team this year and playing better. Uh, you know, uh, certainly we knew that we strengthened our, our pitching staff this offseason. And uh, so that doesn't surprise me. We swung the bats pretty darn well last year mm -hmm. uh, as a whole for a season. That doesn't surprise me. So, you know, to get off to a great start uh, uh, always helps. It just makes everything settle down. You know, we had such a rough month last year in May. And it's tough to dig yourself out of a hole when it's that deep. Believe me, the guys are feeling a lot more relaxed this year. <laughs> and they look like in the dugout they're having a good time. Yeah, well, it's fun to win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to ask you, and I mean, let's, let's talk about Francisco Rodriguez. I mean, you know, you, you pitched a long time, and obviously you didn't have the same kind of stuff at the end of your career that you did in the beginning of your career. But uh, K-Rod, I mean, he's been lights out, nine saves, and, uh, you know, he's doing it a little bit differently than he has throughout his career. But, you know, he's, he's spotting the ball good. He's got great stuff, and as a relief pitcher, you need, good, need to have good control. And he's getting ahead of hitters, uh, you know, and with this lineup they got, you know, he, he's probably a little more relaxed out there because if he knows if he does give up a run, these guys are going to score runs because uh, they're doing it. I mean, the first five, six slots in the in the lineup here for the Brewers, they're all hitting right around 300. Yeah. So that's a tough lineup. That's almost like our lineup back in 81, 82. I mean, there was no holes in the lineup. Yeah. Well, guys, Rock was talking about this earlier, too. You get a little competitiveness within, too, if it's a hitter. If, if you're if you're scuffling, somebody else is going to pick you up, and that drives you a little bit. I imagine much the same oh, yeah. with pitching stands, right? Oh, yeah. You know, I, you know, I could afford to sometimes give up a run in this in the seventh or eighth inning with this. With the I would have hated to face our team. <laughs> you know, we had a great lineup. Right. So you could afford to make a mistake, and guys would still score runs for you. I don't remember you ever giving up a run. <laughs> That's true. Rem remind me of that one <laughs> run you gave up. <laughs> That's funny about him. It's not funny. I mean, it was the truth. When he came in the game, the game was over. Well, we, that's how we felt. And that I was mean, sometimes the seventh inning, and right? I'm not just oh, saying yeah. that. I'm, I'm honest. Right, I'm right. telling you, when we brought him in, we knew that if we could get to Raleigh, the game was over. And, and again, it, it wasn't the ninth a lot of times. No, it was no, seventh, no, eighth no. inning, right? It could be. The seventh and you know, when you're in certain situations, absolutely. Well, thank you, Robin. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Got to ask you two guys, and, and maybe... I'll make an assumption with the question, but every year when you when it gets to late Mar late February, early March, spring training, did it take a while to get that itch out? Because I would imagine your body, you're so conditioned to get yourself ready, or do you still have that, or did that leave uh, a while ago? The, you know, after the after the end of the season, you're tired more mentally than anything and physically. Uh, but you know, right around the first of January, you start looking at the you're looking at the calendar. Well, you know, 15th of February is coming up, and you know, you get that itch. You, you, if you play long enough, you get that itch to get the spring training and start all over again. What do you miss most about not playing? I mean, uh, individually. I mean, being around the guys. I being think the, that's for me. You know. Yeah, yeah. I think being around I, the clubhouse. Most you know. most everybody says that. You know, the camaraderie uh, that we had was, you know, was so much fun. You look forward to going to the right. ballpark every yeah. day because it really was fun. It was. Uh, you know, everybody got along. We didn't have any disagreements in the clubhouse. Uh, 
uh, you know, it was fun. And when you're winning, it's even more fun. So we had some the good only times. arguments we ever had were in the flip games before. <laughs> <laughs> the card games before. Too. Card games. I, I came up with when you guys all veteran guys and uh, you guys get on each other pretty good. I mean, yeah. you know, and that was part of the whole thing. I mean, thick skin, you guys, it was literally like a family. Brothers arguing oh. a lot of times and things like that. Yeah, you know, guys will get on each other, but, you know, you give it back to each other. But, you know, it was all good fun. I, I want to ask you now, replay. What do, what do you guys think of the replay system, how it's working? Uh, do you agree with it? Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're taking I think you're taking maybe a little bit out of the umpire's hands here. Uh, you know, it's it's certainly cutting down on arguments between right. managers yeah. and, and umpires. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know if it, I don't know if I'd go for the, the whole thing with the calls at first base like bronze bronze call here earlier. But, uh, you know, you're, I think you're taking the. Taking the game out of the umpires a little bit, Robin. Well, I don't. You've been around it on a daily basis so far. I, I've seen some of it. I'm not a big fan of of slowing down the flow of the game, mm -hmm. but you could answer better. It, it, has that become an issue? Do you feel that not there's really. too I, many I too many uh, questionable calls that then slow down the the momentum of the game or anything like that that would be the only thing I would be concerned about yeah, every every manager I think has a process by which he goes through but uh, you know they go out right away then all this and there's no arguing you're right I mean they're not yeah. arguing and I think that takes away from the game yeah, a little bit. I, right? I would say I enjoy a good argument yeah. uh, you know pick up the base and throw it once in a while and <laughs> kick the dirt I would rather watch that than an umpire put a headset on <laughs> so, I would we were uh, in Billy I guess it, all this, it's right? all old They'd school you know there's a lot of stuff that goes on today that that I, I, I kind of like the old stuff better, but you know, you got to move on and things. Yeah, are, well, I agreed with you. You know, and when we were talking about it last year, and uh, you know, they put this uh, program together. I think it's the best possible scenario for a replay. I mean, umpires aren't really involved in overturning or confirming a call. It's all done back in New York. They're looking at it before uh, they go. But uh, you know, it is what it is. I mean, uh, we're every every sport's doing it, so baseball's following suit. Yeah. I'd like to see what the average is for ejections for managers for the first month of the season. See how many managers actually got thrown out Probably of the not game. That many. Not that many. Way down. Way down. <laughs> Lolly Fingers, Robin Yao joining us here in the booth. We are through six. Baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. The Wisconsin Lottery, reminding you to please play responsibly. And by Miller Lite, now in the original can. It's Miller time. We thank the Hall of Famers, Mr. Young, Mr. Fingers, for joining us here in the booth. Uh, Time to move on. They, they, got summoned, they got summoned by Bob Euchre. You know, Euchre's off in the seventh inning, and uh, you're going to have a chat with him. So, uh, you know, Bob Euchre trumps us, that's for sure. But we appreciate them sitting down. They have two great guys, and uh, I'll tell you, consummate pros and, and good people.
That's right. I just sat back and I'm gonna be a fan here. I just I want to hear want to hear you guys talk a little baseball. That's fun. If they hung around, we were going to get you know, with Robin about the transfer rule. You know, home plate collisions. Get his thoughts on that. Right. Another t another time. He'll be around again. Oh yeah. Starling Castro leads off the Cubs. Seventh inning. And that's a base hit. Castro with his first hit of the night. As promised earlier in the game, we have the AT&T fan photo of the game. Tweet your photo to hashtag fan photo for a chance to be shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Tonight out at the ballpark for Marie. Cubs with only their third hit. Nate Sherholtz to the plate. Struck out swinging and a fly ball to right. This is a fly ball to right center. And this is going to be off the wall. Gomez unable to come up with it. Castro will move to third. And the Cubs have runners at second and third to start the seventh. And a little bit more of that side of the ballpark. You see Gomez thinking he should have made that play, but that would have been a circus catch out there in right center. Fourth double of the year for Shearholtz and Garza with a fastball middle in. Look at Gomez. He comes close. Not sure if he got a glove on it, but he got there very close, a little bit out of his reach. Off the glove, actually. I tell you, he went a long way to you know just make that close. As always, covering a lot of ground. Just didn't miss. Another highlight real catch. Junior Lake. Chance to get his team back into the game. Down four, but threatening. Cubs attacking early in the count now, third time through. Don't want to have to deal with that slider that's been so good. They get a fastball early in the count. They're getting a swing at it. Not taking. Well, maybe Garza's fastball getting a little bit more of the plate now than it was early. Two strikes to Lake. Ryan Sweeney on deck. He knew it. Looking breaking ball probably. Busted him in with a fastball. Good pitch. Yep, had plenty of the plate that time. And when you're looking outside, looking for something off speed to get the fastball in, looks like it's going to hit you, but it's a strike. Strikeout number seven. Or Matt Garza. Ryan Sweeney the hitter. And he takes a strike. One and one. The Cubs have Castro standing at third and sure holds at second. Matt Garza and the Brewers trying to protect a four run lead. The ground ball to first. This will score a run. Sweeney retired, but Castro is in. 
And it's a five to two game. Yeah. Two men out. Yeah, second and third, nobody out. You figure one run's going to score. Now, if Garth can get out of this inning with only one on the board, you got to feel like he's done his job. Single double to start the inning. He's going to go to the bench. Wellington Castillo looking for his first hit. He's driven in nine runs this season, all nine coming with two out. It's Wesley Wright. And one of three left handers down in that Cubs bullpen. That's Ryan Kalish on deck. He would be pinch hitting for Villanueva with the Cubs getting there. Guards are trying to prevent that. Actually, Ramirez on a relief of being a waiver. Villanueva went the first five, gave up 11 hits, five runs. Ramirez came on in the sixth and gave up a walk, struck out one. That was it. One and two to Castillo. And Luke Roy goes down and blocks it. Nice block with a man at third base. Just about textbook every time for Luke Roy. Squares the shoulders up, and that baseball drops right in front of him. Two and two to Castillo. Broken bat. Ramirez. And that'll do it for the Cubs. Nice work by Garza. Cubs had something going. They pushed just a run. Jonathan Luke Roy getting ready to take some more cuts. As we move to the bottom of the seventh, Brewers up by three.
away. Vote early, vote often, and vote Brewers to make sure your hometown stars make the trip to Minnesota this July. Visit Brewers.com to cast your ballots. Cast away, just like the shirt says. Andy. <laughs> Wearing it well. I see some good Brewers representation. Ryan Kalish is the new left fielder for Chicago. And a new pitcher on the mound as well for the Cubbies. It's Wesley Wright, the left hander. Yeah, yeah, the former Houston Astro left hander, diminutive left hander out there. Eighth appearance, good good numbers for Wright. 270 earned run average. Has allowed the one home run in seven appearances. Hey, joined the uh, Tampa Bay Rays in August. Actually appeared in a couple of the ALDS playoff games against the Red Sox. Worked a couple of innings. Starts Luke Croy with a strike. Good night at the plate once again for Jonathan Lucroy. Oh, and two to Jonathan Lucroy. Brewers with two runs in the first, single runs in innings three, four, and five. And Brewers have left eight stranded so far tonight. They've had opportunities to put this one away, but just have not been able to do it. Yeah, Cubs still right in the thick of things here tonight. Bouncer back to the mound, one out. Am I doing? Here's what's on tap of the Brewers presented by Miller Lite. Tomorrow's matchup, Travis Wood for the Cubbies. You see a very good ERA for him. Likewise, Marco Estrada. Pitching matchup. We'll get things started. With Brewers live at 5.30 right here on Fox Sports Wisconsin. And Marco Estrada has been stellar. And from the beginning of spring training, he's been on top of his game. Travis Wood the left handed the Brewers four and one so far this year against left handed starters. Look at tomorrow's starter for the crew. Want to know the count to Chris Davis. Turned in a defensive highlight in the sixth. Diving catch of a line drive off the bat of Anthony Rizzo. Wesley Wright, the third pitcher tonight for the Cubs. Zach Duke. Starting to get loose in the Brewers bullpen. Yeah, it looks as though he's getting loose to come into the ball game. Yeah, Kalish, a left-handed hitter. Bonifacio, a switch hitter. And you've got the left-handed hitting Valbuena. Ball two strikes to Davis. Very good outing for Matt Garza. Seven innings has allowed just four hits, a couple of runs. Walked one and struck out seven. Davis out on strikes. Let's check in again with Sophia. Matt, Wisconsin sports fans, make sure you stay up to date with all the latest events around the area from your favorite hometown teams to the Fox Sports Wisconsin girls. We've got you covered. You can log on to FoxSportsWisconsin.com and click on the More tab for information. 
Thank you, Sophia. Lyle Overbay stepping in. He's putting together a pretty nice homestand here. Yes, he is. Starting to swing the bat well. I guess he's cleared his mind because of the birth of his son. Yeah, back on the last road trip. Game's tough enough, let alone when you're, you know, split time, your concentration is split between the ballpark and home. You see Wendy's at the plate for Lyle after a fly ball to center in the second. A solo blast and then a base hit to left. There's a fly ball hit in the air. Left center field. Kalish at the track will make the catch. Lyle gives it a ride. Kalish able to come up with it. We are through seven, five, two, Milwaukee. The eighth, we go five to two Brewers over the Cubs, and we're getting set for Brewers Live. Lots to talk about tonight. Good, solid performance, seven strong innings from Matt Garza. You know, anytime you start a series, you got to get off to a good start. Matt Garza needed to get off to a good start tonight, very well tonight, commanding his fastball, utilizing that break of all, a good seven innings. Trying to get his first win as a Brewer against his old team, the Chicago Cubs. We'll see if that holds true. Here tonight. Let's take a look at our Marshfield Clinic leaders in relief. Zach Duke is set to come in, and what a job. Rodriguez Smith, no runs allowed in 12 appearances. Thornburg just one in 12 appearances. And Zach Duke has done extremely well. The left hander now in in the eighth inning. And again, Brewers Live is on the way. We're going to keep Augie right here to chat with Matt and Rock here in the eighth inning. I think you guys may want to talk a little more pitching. We shall see, man. Yeah, yeah, Craig, a lot of good stuff to talk about. Uh, Augie touched on Augie, you touched on it already. And now Zach Duke ready to come in. But, man, Matt Garza, just nice, strong outing for him tonight. And right from the beginning, all the way through, really was able to avoid the big inning, which has kind of been his kind of I'm on keeping problem, you know, in his first four starts. I mean, he gave up a five run fourth in Pittsburgh, but eliminated that tonight as Zach Duke continues here tonight. A three up, three down. Inning on Tuesday against the Padres. He's made seven consecutive scoreless appearances. He faces Ryan Kalish to lead things off. And you know, Augie, please still with us. This bullpen has been so good. Augie from all angles. Zach Duke is doing his share and then some. Well, you really have to like the way they're throwing the ball. And it all comes down. You come in the game and you throw strikes. So you look at this bullpen. They come in. They don't walk out of guys. They get the ball over the plate ahead in the counts. And I think when you look at a bullpen, you come in, you get ahead of hitters, it, make, it makes it difficult for them to get good swings off you, and that's been a big credit to this bullpen. Okay, how difficult is it for a guy like Zach Duke? I mean, a veteran guy, he pitched one way throughout his career, then all of a sudden last year drops down, and now with that new arm angle, 
that he's been using. Not only has he been effective against left handers, but he's been able to get right handers out as well. How difficult of an adjustment is that this late in his career? Well, I'll tell you what, you know, you always feel you can, as a starting pitcher, that you can really build up, and when you get in a game, you can kind of see how the flow of the game goes. The one thing about coming in out of bullpen, you have to throw strikes immediately, and that's what's most important. And the one thing Zach did is he changed his delivery a bit. He dropped down a little bit. He's been very consistent, and he's found out that when he commands the strike zone, uses the different arm angles, he's going to get people out, and he's been very consistent. Yeah, Tyler Thornburg has been tremendous. I mean, he's a guy that came up last year really... You know, didn't have much success, but then all of a sudden he came out of the bullpen in Pittsburgh. He picked up for Loesch in that rain delay, and then ever since that time, he's been a different guy. I mean, throwing all of his pitches for strikes, working quickly, and throwing with a lot of confidence. I mean, what do you see different in Tyler Thornburg these days? Well, I see the same thing he was at the end of last year. You know, the one thing about Tyler Thornburg, it's all about being aggressive. Being aggressive and commanding the strikes, and I really like what he's done. He's gone out there when he was sent down last year, went down and worked on it. Didn't have a lot of success, but when he came up here, he started commanding the strike zone with a fastball, using that great break of all he has. But I think a key to him, he's been able to throw the change up for his strikes. It keeps the hitters honest. Jerry Augustine joining us here in the top half of the eighth. Ryan Kalish, the runner at first. Emilio Bonifacio at the plate. Out sharply out of play. Bonifacio, the RBI single in the third inning. Zach Duke on in relief of Matt Garza. And yeah, this is where Ron Renicki has a lot of confidence in Zach Duke, Will Smith. You know, not just their ability to get left handers out, but right handers as well with that sinker off the corner. Jim Henderson getting ready. Another guy, Augie, who's been getting the job done. Yeah, he, you know, he started out slow, and he did the same thing last year in spring training. He quite, quite didn't have his delivery down where he wanted. He's a little erratic with it. But I'll tell you what, they've been able, because of the guys pitching so well in that bullpen, allow him to get, get himself in his delivery down pad and being able to throw the ball over to play consistently. And lately, he's been very good. A ball two strikes to Bonifacio. P of a 357 batting average. <laughs> and then laying the bat on the baseball already with 30 hits this year. Two and two. Looked like Zach Duke wanted that one. That backdoor slider. Tried to catch the outside corner. Looked like it might have been off the corner a bit. There it is by an inch. <laughs> Here comes the 2 2. Got him swinging. Bonifacio goes down on strikes. We take a look at the Toyota game summary. Two, five, and 11 for the Brewers. Two runs, just five hits and one error for the Cubs. We've been talking about Matt Garza, a very nice outing, and Carlos Gomez making things happen offensively. Three for four, scored a couple of runs, stolen base. And has helped the Brewers to this five to two lead. Oh, it seemed like uh, Matt Garza had his good stuff right out of the bullpen tonight after his warm-up tosses. In his first four starts, it looked as though it took him a while, a couple of innings, to get his curveball and slider to work for him, but didn't seem to be the case tonight. No, he seemed like right when he came into the game that he had good command of all his pitches, and that's really important for him when you look at the style of pitcher. He's a power pitcher. He's a aggressive pitcher that really needs to command that fastball. But when he can use that break of ball effectively, he can be very good. And that's exactly what he did tonight. He got out there right from the get-go. Didn't have to break him on maybe that first inning like he wanted to. But I tell you what, they worked it into the game. 
And I'll tell you, the last six, seven innings, he's been throwing the ball really well. And that's the thing. You just can't give up on pitches because they're not working for you. When you're warming up or in the first inning, you just got to keep grinding it out. We see that with Gallardo a lot with his curveball. Well, you know, when you, as a pitcher, you look at two things pre, uh, working with a pitch like a breaker bar, even trying to command your fastball. It's first, it's the, it's the physical part of the game. Do you feel comfortable throwing the, throwing the ball? Are you releasing it properly? And all the things that go in with making a good pitch. And then, secondly, it's the mental thing. Do you have the confidence in that pitch to throw it for a strike on a consistent basis? When you put those together, together, and then you add in with the catcher calling the game, and Rock, I think you're very well aware of it. Behind the plate, you still, if a guy doesn't have it, you still have to go with it, but you have to pick your spots, and that has a lot to do with the success or bringing back a curveball or locating a fastball. Full count to Luis Valbuena. Take a look at pitching coach Rick Kranitz. A lot of his hard work so far this year has paid off. You know, scanning reports and pitchers have been executing pretty well. Ryan Kalish is the runner at first with one out. And that is strike three call. That surprised him with a fastball, didn't he? He was thinking slatter away, and Zach Duke threw him the fastball. Rick Kraddick's like this, saying, good pitch, kid. Here it is. Right down the middle, or at least outer half. And when you're looking breaking ball, you have no chance to hit the fastball. That is the ninth strikeout for Brewers pitching. Back to back strikeouts for Zach Duke. Anthony Rizzo. Down on strikes twice and then lying to left. Very nice catch from Chris Davis. Rizzo now at 304. That's just such a tough arm angle for a left hander to hang in there. Not only does he throw from that three quarter, but then he'll drop down even more. And that baseball almost coming across home plate at an angle. He won't do that too often against a right handed hitter. This might be his last hitter that he's going to face. He's got Castro on deck. Two balls, one strike. Jim Henderson ready in the Brewers' bullpen if needed. Duke trying to make it eight straight scoreless appearances. That fastball perfect right on the outside corner. Now he's got him set up for the slider. Let's see if Rizzo will chase. Reaches out and fouls it off. Stand up there against a guy like Zach with that arm angle, just waiting for a mistake. But he really hasn't made too many this year. Let's hope he leaves one of those sliders in. Make one of those mistakes. Rizzo is one of those who can make you pay for it. Right. Well, no walks here. I mean, you got the tying run on the on deck circle, and a pretty good hitter waiting to come up there.
Rizzo stays alive. Good battle going on here, Augie. Yeah, I did. I, you know, you look at what, what Zach doing, and we talked about making that transformation from a starter to reliever. You look at what he has done, and you really have to compliment him because he's changes his arm angles. Right now, with, with at the plate, he's given the hitter three or four different arm angles to look at, and he's been commanding the strike zone to Rizzo. Zach Duke with the 3-2 pitch. Got him swinging. He strikes out the side. Augie, thanks much. We'll check in with you again very soon, we hope. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Absolutely. Brewers have a little bit to smile about tonight. We are through seven and one half. Five to the Brewers. Tonight's shining moment brought to you by the Marsh Field Clinic. Check out Chris Davis laying out. Taking a base hit away from Anthony Rizzo in the sixth inning. His defense has been very good. He knew he was going to hit, but his defense has come to on a number of occasions. And Matt Garza saying thank you very much. Gene Segura. Leading off the bottom of the eighth for Milwaukee. Leslie Wright on for his second inning of work. Tired the Brewers in order in the seventh. Villanueva went the first five. Ramirez worked the sixth. Two and nothing to the Brewers shortstop. Ricky Weeks in the on deck circle. And you know who in the bullpen for the Brewers. At it again. Not a bad job by Zach Duke, huh? Again, that's been amazing. It's eight straight scoreless appearances for the left hand. And a non roster invitee to spring training that made the ball club, and uh, boy, has he made a big impact. Segura so in that eighth spot. Sophia Minner tells a little more on that. Matt, since being dropped down to the eighth spot at the beginning of the Padres series, Gene is now hitting four for 12, and Ron Renneke before today's game said it's hard to tell whether it was the idea to relax him, whether he actually is more relaxed at the plate, or maybe he's just seeing better pitches, but he said the last game, especially uh, breaking a, a streak of 256 at-bats without a home run, he said that's what we've been waiting to see from Gene this season. 
Well, you would think he wouldn't see as many good pitches in the number eight spot batting in front of the pitcher as he would hitting in front of Ryan Braun. I think You're it's right. a, you know, you know, taking a little bit of pressure off him, dropping down in the order. And I think, uh, you know, the work that he and Johnny Nairn have done on, on a consistent basis has really paid off. Full count to Segura. Round ball to second. Gonna have to hurry. And does not get him. A little roll of the Bonifacio. And Segura. The runner at first. You just love the way he busted down the lines. So Rick Renteria is gonna have a short stroll out. Take his time to allow his replay group in the dugout to figure out if they're gonna challenge this or not. That looks like he might uh, had a gripe there. It looks like he was out. Yeah, that one might get overturned. And we'll have our second replay review of the night. Kerwin Danley might be 0 for 2 here tonight. <laughs> yeah, Ryan Braun. Back in the third inning. Was originally called out on a ground ball to short, but replay overturned it. And now here's a at the moment safe call against Gene Segura that could get switched a base hit that's probably going to be reversed overturned well, we just saw the slow motion now let's check real speed tough, tough to call those you're right but you have replay these days and because you have replay, you can slow it down in Exmo, and it's not when the glove closes around the baseball. It's when contact is made with the glove right there, and by a couple of inches, it looks like that's an out. And that will be the call. He is out at first. So a ground ball to second. So it works. Ball overturned. So Segura is retired. Get to the ninth spot of the order and pinch hitting is Ricky Weeks. Whole lot of at bats for Ricky to begin this season. Yeah. 26, that's it. First pitch swinging off the glove of Castro and Bonifacio on the rebound will have no play. Ricky Weeks will reach. I think that might have been a tough play for Starling Castro, even had he been able to keep it in the glove. His momentum was going away from first base. And we'll see how they rule it. Could very easily be a base hit. Of course, it could be an error as well, but they're going to give him a hit. Ricky Weeks with an infield single. Even with the good arm of Starlin Castro, I doubt they would have been able to get Ricky. Very nice night for Carlos Gomez. Cubs finally got him out. For well, the first time tonight with a fly ball in the sixth. Brewers with 12 hits in the game compared to just five for the Cubs. Wesley Wright. The one and oh count to Gomez. Make it two and nothing. Cubs will have the middle of their order in the top of the ninth. Castro will lead things off.
two and one to Carlos Gomez. Just trying to sink that fastball off the outside corner to Gomez. Presley White knows that Gomez is trying to hook one, trying to pull one somewhere, and not giving her anything on the inner half of the plate. Let's see if Ricky's going to run here on a 3 1 pitch. Big cut and a full count. Gomez with his three hit night. His average has gone from 289 to 309. And here comes Nuggets, the 3 2. Got ahead of myself, a throw over to first. Yeah, they're thinking Weeks might run on a full count. Stay out of the double play. Gomez settles back in. And he strikes out swinging. Dropped a little curveball on him that time. One out in the eighth. Here's our never stop improving player profile. And check out this homestand in progress for Brewers second baseman Scooter Jeanette. That's what you call a table setter right there. Getting on base, driving in some runs. He's been uh, doing a nice job at second base as well. Playing with a lot of confidence. And why wouldn't he have that confidence level the way he's going? Getting a lot of playing time. Be interesting to see if he gets in there tomorrow against a left hander, Alex Wood. We'll get things started with Brewers Live tomorrow at 5.30. The middle game of this series. Actually, Travis Wood. Alex Woods with the Braves. <laughs> Ball one to Jeanette. Travis Wood versus Marco Estrada. That's your matchup tomorrow. Weeks the runner at first. With two men out. Two balls, no strikes to Scooter Jeanette. Wesley Wright is ready. And Jeanette fouls it away. The pitching matchup in St. Louis tonight. The Cardinals lead the Pirates one to nothing as they are in the top of the ninth in St. Louis. Shelby Miller started. Mike Matheny using four out of the bullpen. A lot of low scoring games in baseball this year so far. Yeah, they really are. Number of one to nothing games, two to ones. I mean, for a Cup Brewer game, five to two relatively low scoring. Well, we talked about it, the, the pitching that the Brewers have seen, period, but it's really been the case in this ballpark. Now, Carlos Villanueva has really struggled. Let's not hide that, but the other starters the Brewers will see this weekend have pitched well. The Brewers will miss Jeff Smarja. 
who's pitched extremely well. Right. Well, starting pitching hasn't been the issue for Chicago. It's been their bullpen. And the bullpen's been pretty good tonight. Haven't allowed a run. Yeah, they face that staff to begin the season with the Atlanta Braves. Cardinals, San Diego, very strong pitching staff. The Pirates not all bad either. I know the numbers would tell you a little bit off the pace of teams such as the Brewers and certainly Atlanta. But very good. The San Diego staff could get lost in the shuffle because the team is a little below 500, but they can pitch. They can pitch. They can't have a tough time scoring runs at times. When you can pitch, you're going to stay in games. You don't have to score a ton. Jeanette out on strikes, and that'll do it for the Brewers in the eighth. Well, K Rod time again. We move to the ninth. Brewers five. The Chicago Cubs. To the top of the ninth we go at Miller Park with the Brewers leading the Chicago Cubs five to two. Keep in mind when scoring four runs, the Brewers are 13 and 0. So far, so good. Here's your Columbia St. Mary's safe tracker, Francisco Rodriguez. Yeah, with a save tonight, he ties Rob Nen for 18th place on the all-time saves list at 314. He's nine for nine. Last pitch picked up a save on Wednesday against the Padres. Numbers aren't too shabby right there. Yeah, those are okay. 18 strikeouts in 12 innings. He's given up nothing. And he'll face Starling Castro. To lead off the ninth. Castro singled and scored his last trip. In the seventh, first pitch, he pops it up. Take a charge is Ramirez. That's out number one. Throwing strikes has been the key for K Rod. Three walks, 18 strikeouts in 12 innings. Getting ahead and using that devastating changeup that he's had this year. Interesting listening to Ron Renicky. Not only has his bullpen been good, it's been efficient. That's the word he keeps using, efficient. And he mean, what he means by that is not walking guys. Yep. Getting behind an account and making them hit their way on, not messing around. Nate Sheerholtz.
one and one. One out, base is empty. And the Brewers leading five to two. This has popped up, and there will be no play. Now, FoxSportsWisconsin.com. Andrew Grumman has more from the Bob Euchre statue unveiling and also has a story on how Elian Herrera is a true glove man thanks to his versatility. <laughs> now, how much of that versatility do we want to see here in the, in the coming days? Well, you got a couple of days before Maldonado comes back, and uh, an absolute emergency has to be taking place for him to get back there behind home plate. One and two to Sheerholtz. Strike three, swinging. Two men out of the night for Chicago. And climbing that list, Rob Ned next. He, one more out, he ties him. There's that changeup. It's been a good one. That's where you want to put it with two strikes. One out to go. He will face pinch hitter John Baker. Who is hitless in his last six games? 0 for 17. And that's strike one. And 0 for 17 is his season. Appearing in his eighth game. The only way he's reached is he was hit by a pitch and walked. Nothing in two to the pinch hitting John Baker. K Rod is ready. And the two strike pitch. Francisco Rodriguez continues to climb the charts and the Brewers continue to win games. Win number 17 for the crew as K Rod closes it out again. And the guys have been amazing. I mean, very rarely does he get a day off. Change up down in the dirt. That's where you want it. You don't want to leave it up in the strike zone. But how about this pitching stand for the Brewers? How good have they been to start this season? Wow. Matt Garza goes seven strong. Zach Duke works the eighth. Francisco Rodriguez the ninth. As the Brewers get their 17th win against just six losses. Let's throw it over to Craig Deshaun. Brewers live post game. Well, we should have another stacked show. We're going to hear from Ron Renicky. Talk about the big moments in this game. K Rock gets the save. Garza, his first Brewer win against his old club. Brewers Live is next.